The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched the servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent out other servants saying, tell those invited, behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed and everything is ready, come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops and it destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, bind his hands and his feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. F. Scott Fitzgerald is probably one of the best known American authors from the early part of the 20th century. He wrote a novel called The Great Gatsby. And not long ago, Leonardo DiCaprio made that into a movie that was quite exceptional. If you have an opportunity sometime, watch that movie. It's beautiful scenery and a uh, wonderful use of color and light. Story of the great Gatsby goes something like this. Jay Gatsby was uh, a filthy rich man. He lived on Long Island in a beautiful, ornate, huge mansion. And every weekend he had a particular passion in his life. He through banquets and parties for hundreds of people. And at each one of those parties, dozens of waiters would reach out and tend to the needs of all those gathered. The house would be decorated beautifully and there would be succulent food laid out and the liquor flowed freely. And the various things that Jay Gatsby used for entertainment were also quite exceptional. He would have exotic animals wandering the grounds. He would have displays of fireworks that were beyond imagination. He would hire the best entertainment from New York City. It was a big deal to go to one of Gatsby's party. And Nick Carraway was the narrator of this story in the, in the novel, and he made an offhand comment to one of the party attenders, and he said, anybody, or excuse me, everybody that's anybody wants to come to one of Gatsby's parties. Well, you know something, all of us love to go to gatherings. We love parties. We love to go to those places where we have an opportunity to sit down with people that we know and interact with them and eat with them and enjoy music and dancing with them. In the course of my life, I've had the opportunity to go to some really big parties, some 
weddings that were beyond the pale um, to a state dinner one time where there was uh, every governmental leader you could think of. But as human beings, we yearn for those times that we can go to parties and banquets. And for most of us, the bigger and flashier, the better. That's what drew so many people to Gatsby's parties. So it's no wonder that when our faith talks about the greatest mysteries of God's gifts to us, that they often are explained in terms of parties and banquets. In that first reading today from the book of the prophet Isaiah, you heard the Zion, heaven, the kingdom of God described as a mountain and it says, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples with the choicest and most succulent of food and the richest wines. On this mountain, the Lord will take care of us all. And of course, on that mountain is Zion, God's kingdom. And in the gospel, you heard the parable of the king who prepares a wedding feast for his son and then sends out his servants to call those that have been invited to the party to come. The fatted calf has been prepared. Everything is in readiness. And it says that the people had all kinds of excuses. Some went off to their farms. Some went off to their business. Some of them just openly beat up and injured and even killed the servants that were coming to announce that the party was ready. And you heard the king's response. He went and destroyed the cities of those murderers. And then he sent his servants out to the highways and byways and said, bring in anybody that you can, the rich, the poor, the lame, bring them in so that my hall will be filled and my banquet full. Well, you know, when we think of that parable, we are um, made aware of the fact that uh, we are often like the people in that parable in terms of our relationship with this great invitation that God gives each and every one of us, not only to his kingdom in heaven, but to come each and every Sunday to receive the choicest wines and the most succulent of food, his own body and blood present on the altar. How we can make excuses about not coming, how we can go off to our farms and business, how we can even openly reject the invitation. We hear what Christ said in the gospel, many are called, few are chosen. So in preparation for this Sunday, I was thinking in my own mind, what are some of the reasons that people use or adhere to that keep them away from God's banquet table? Well, it boils down to basically about four. The first one is one that we hear all the time. I'm just too busy. I just have too many other things going on. I've got a soccer game in the morning and I've got a party in the afternoon and I've got uh, all kinds of things that I got to do for my job. Maybe if I can sandwich some time in between, I'll come to mass or uh, pay attention to the sacraments or think about God's kingdom in heaven. But I'm really too busy to get too involved. And the truth is, if we're that busy, we're too busy. First and foremost gift that all of us have been given is God's body and blood, Christ's body and blood present on the altar. And our hope is that we will be with him forever in heaven, where we will sit around his banquet table forever, enjoying 
the richest gifts that we can imagine. The second reason is that sometimes people think they're too good to come. They think that they really don't need it, that they live a life that's exemplary enough and that they don't need to come to confession, they don't need to come to the mass, they don't need to occupy their attention with trying to improve their life by coming to worship the Lord. They think that they're too good for that. And of course, that's an idea implanted in their mind by the evil one, a, a kind of pride and arrogance that certainly will not sell well at the final judgment. The third reason that I think people use to stay away is just the opposite. They feel that there is something that they've done in their life that is so terrible, so horrible, that God can never forgive them, and they're ashamed. They're ashamed to come before the Lord in the Eucharist. They're ashamed to think about God's gift of heaven because they think that they can't be forgiven. But Jesus always forgives us. He always gives us his mercy and love. Even amidst his justice, he gives us his mercy and love if we just come and ask. And that's another one of those excuses put into our mind by the evil one. Finally, I think, and this is the most interesting excuse of all, it's one that was reflected in the very end of this parable when you heard about the man that had entered the wedding feast without a wedding garment on. It was traditional to wear the best clothes to go into the wedding feast. And of course, when we hear this, we wonder, well, you know, the king had sent the servants out to gather in the rich and the poor alike. Maybe this man was too poor to afford a wedding garment. And look at how he was treated. We feel sorry for him. But the truth of it is that at every one of those weddings of that kind, a party of that kind, there would have been extra wedding garments laid out for those that had traveled and maybe didn't have a wedding garment with them or people that couldn't afford a wedding garment. There was one that was available for them. All they had to do was put it on. The truth of this man was that he refused to put on the wedding garment. And when he was confronted, he just hung his head. Well, how often do we refuse God's gifts? How often do we refuse Jesus' friendship? How often do we refuse the opportunity to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that changes us and guides us and leads us? I can be rebellious in my own life. I can say I want to do it my way rather than God's way. But you know, in the long run, what I need to understand is my way leads to rack and ruin. God's way leads to his holy mountain where there is the choicest wine and the most succulent food, where there is an eternity to be lived forever with him. So today we are reminded about what Nick Carraway said about Gatsby's parties. And we change it just a little bit. That everybody who is anybody, and that's all of us, always desires to be in one of God's parties to come to his Eucharist, to come to his heaven, to come to his glory, if we just follow the course set out. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.